Hello tea nerds, this is Tom from Chaseki and I'm broadcasting live from our tea house in Chiang Mai, Thailand and today's topic is about cold brewing. How many of you ever tried cold brewing and how many of you are kind of bored of drinking hot tea all the time, especially on a hot summer's day, you're seeking for something cool, something nice and refreshing, right? So cold brewing is the perfect alternative uh, and I can explain you some very easy steps how you can actually cold brew at home and it's not difficult at all. Um, I um, bought this here uh, on our last trip to Japan. This is a special cold brew bottle. Um, it has a filter in here, you can take that out. So it looks like this. Uh, filter option and um, then you have this you just screw the filter in like that then it's tight and then you have your bottle and I've already prepared this um, I got some very nice sencha here I don't know if you can see this yeah. This is a Shogyukuen um, Asatsuyu Sensa. Very, very nice. Really, really fruity. Perfect on a cold day, especially cold brewed. I love it. And personally, I really, really enjoy cold brew teas. Um, since we're living here in Thailand, it's hot all year long. And um, a cold brew is just perfect on a hot day to cool off. So what you want to do is you just add the tea. Uh, for a bottle like this, this is uh, um, 750 ml and um, I'm adding 15 grams of um, the sencha. Um, you can basically use any kind of tea. Uh, I tried this with hojicha, I tried this with genmaisha, I tried this even with Chinese teas and the results were always amazing. Um, so I'm just adding this to the bottle and then you just add water here there you go just add the water to it and uh, what you want to do is uh, as the name says um, you want to cold brew it which means uh, you have to take that bottle and put it into the fridge for at least one hour, that's what they recommend, one to two hours. Um, I prefer to put it into the fridge overnight um, because it extracts more, even more of the great flavors of the tea. And this is how it looks like. So you can see the tea leaf is sinking to the bottom and um, you have a little bit of dust in here, which is totally normal. And um, that's basically it. You put that into the fridge overnight and the next morning you have a wonderful refreshing tea. And I've already prepared something so you can have a look. All right, so this is a cold brew. It was also 15 uh, grams of sencha and 750 ml. And you can see the, uh, the tea expanded because it's soaking all the water. Just to compare again, this is how it looks in the beginning here, and this is look. Uh, this is how it looks after uh, it's been several hours in the fridge. Um, if you don't have a bottle like this, it, it's no big deal. Basically, you can use any kind of bottle. Uh, you just need to use a filter when you pour it into a glass. So I've, I'm giving this uh, a nice swirl. Um, the reason why you want to do this is because um, the flavors might sink down to the bottom and at the top you just have plain water or not enough flavor so you definitely want to make sure that you give uh, the bottle a shake um, or stir it with a spoon and once that is done all you need to do is take a nice glass and pour the tea into your glass. If you want to, you can add extra ice. I personally don't need that because I think um, the ice um, dissolves and it tunes down the flavor of the tea. So the, 
the, the, the liquor is actually cold enough when it's getting out of the fridge. Uh, as you can see, it's a very, very nice, beautiful color. And um, let's give it a try. Mm. Awesome. What I personally really love about the cold brews is um, due to the cold temperatures, you do not extract any kind of bitterness from the tea leaf. So if you don't like tea, especially like green tea, it tends to be a little bit more bitter if you don't have the right water temperature. Um, maybe you've experienced that yourself in the past. You pour hot water on a green tea and uh, you did not take care of the temperature that well and then the tea turns to be bitter or you are steeping too long um, and um, that's why many people don't like green tea actually because they think green tea is always bitter but that's not the fact as a matter of fact it's a question of water temperature and uh, water tea ratio in this case um, as i said with the cold temperatures you only um, um, extract um, the sweetness, the natural sweetness that is in the tea leaf and all the fruity floral flavors, all the nuttiness, the grassiness from the tea um, is uh, very dominant and um, yeah as I said it's a perfect drink on a hot summer's day or if you live in a tropical country pretty much every day and it's very refreshing and it's super healthy um, I usually prepare two or three bottles of this per day and um, I drink my tea throughout the day cool and as I said I've been trying this with many many different types of teas I've been doing this with black teas I did that with Chinese teas I know the Chinese don't want to hear that but basically it's it's perfect some of the Chinese oolongs um, or the Taiwanese oolongs um, are a little bit on the bitter side sometimes for me and I personally uh, enjoy teas much more if I do not have that astringency and the bitterness in it so this is the perfect way for me and probably also for you to enjoy uh, green tea or any kind of tea on a hot summer's day another tip that I want to give you is um, you should always store your tea in a tea caddy um, we have several of those caddies here in different sizes. Um, these are for up to 200 grams. Um, they're very good because um, they're airtight. So you just put your tea in there and, um, and you can store your tea. Very stylish. This is from Japan with washi paper. Very, very beautiful. This one too. And we have many different patterns. This is with the Sakura. Uh, we have many different patterns, uh, colors sizes you name it so if you're interested in that let me know and write a comment in the uh, comment box below and uh, if you're interested in one of our teas this is the shogyukin asatsuyu it's essential it's very inexpensive basically for the quality that uh, shogyukin delivers here and if you have further questions you can contact us directly um, via email um, or you can write a comment in the comment box below and uh, that will be all for today. I hope you liked uh, and enjoyed my video and I encourage you to try this at home. Uh, as I said, um, cold brewing is very, very easy. Everyone can do it if you have a fridge and if you have some tea left over. Uh, it doesn't have to be the super duper expensive tea. Uh, you can use, as I said, pretty much every type of tea. I didn't have, I didn't have a tea actually yet that didn't turn out well, so. Uh, as I said, you can do that with every tea, even with fruit teas and uh, flavored teas. It always works and it's always very, very nice and refreshing. So go for it, try this and um, tell me how you actually liked it. Write a comment in the comment box below or send us a message on Facebook. Uh, we'd be happy to hear how your results turned out. And um, yeah, so um, if you don't follow us yet on Facebook. Uh, please follow us on Facebook. Hit the uh, like page, uh, hit the like button. Uh, we are also uh, on uh, Instagram. And um, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, 
this is the perfect time to hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell so every time we upload a video you get a notification so you will be always updated about cool recipes and uh, tea tastings that we are doing all the time so right now we are uploading videos every day and every sunday we have our ongoing um, series about matcha the matcha history so stay tuned on sunday is episode number three health benefits of matcha so if you're interested in that i encourage you to uh, watch that video as well that's all for now um, i'll see you in my next video have a great wonderful day evening wherever you are and always drink the good stuff see you soon take care bye bye